Hello, Tim here. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to make a toolbox. And I'm going to use uh, this toolbox here as a model for making a half size one. And it's a special, special toolbox for my youngest grandson, who was just born a couple weeks ago. But this toolbox here was my grandfather's. And he was a carpenter, and uh, he would uh, put his tools in here, take them to the job site. And I've had this thing for probably 50 years. Uh, he passed when I was young. But I remember fondly of uh, some things like one Christmas when I was quite small, he made a toolbox. It wasn't like this, it was something else that had uh, off cuts and things that he made blocks and things to build things with. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but thinking back on it, uh, how he would cut those pieces up and sand them and, and put them in the box for me to play with. And I don't know whatever happened to it, but I did acquire a lot of his tools over time and I've, I cherish them. And I've used this toolbox many times myself putting my lathe tools in here. One time it was in our living room, we put books in here and different things like that. But it's, uh, it's, it's always in my shop. I've had, I've had it for years. So what I'm gonna do here is take this as a model and make a half size model of it. So everything that I do, and you could do this yourself if you got a toolbox to copy from, or you can just use these measurements and make your own. So this is 28 inches. 28 inch total length and that means 14 inches long your piece now the thickness of it is three quarter inch pine so inside here I have uh, three eighths inch this is birch not pine but this is birch uh, molding actually that I milled down and this uh, is the length of it is 14 inches the width which I had measured is uh, seven and a half so that would be a three and three quarter inch width so that's the bottom and the sides now the ends are inch and three quarters and then this is half of whatever this is here and it was uh, 11 and a half so this ends up a little bit under so it's 11 and uh, five and seven eighths so that still allows for the three quarter inch bottom so that's that's it there's just five pieces of wood plus I scaled down the handle which this is oak and this piece is oak here so that'll that'll serve as the handle. Handle goes through the ends, and so it's the same length as the bottom and the sides. Very simple. So let's get started here. So I'm gonna unpack some stuff here, and we'll get started. Now one of the first things I wanna find out is what this angle is here. This top is two inches, so that means it's one inch, and it's two inches on center there with a one inch hole. So it means it's gonna be a half inch hole. So basically your piece of wood's gonna look like that. So I prepared these pieces already. I drilled one of the holes. And I'm gonna show you how I got to this point here with this piece of wood here. I need to know what that angle is. It's come down to four and a half inches. That means it's two and a quarter. First thing I did was find the center. And mark the center. So now I'm marking this down here. And we're one inch down from the top. That's the center two inches on the original one here. So there's our center. The angle 
is a little trickier. You can do it two ways. You can measure up from the bottom, which probably makes the most sense. So that's three and five eighths up from the bottom. Let's do it this way here. So that's, so we said two inches, it's one inch now. All right, so we got the center of the hole, the top, and now we need that angle. And one of the ways that works pretty good here is using a T-bevel. And so this isn't gonna change in scale, it's just in change in length. So I set that, lock it, and then I put it here on the side of the wood. T-bevels are really handy for when you don't know what the angles are. So you got that. And come around this side here. And then we can, if you want to just use a handsaw, I already did this on my other piece there, but how I would work this This is a Japanese pull saw. And just guide it with your finger on that line. Now one thing I'd recommend now that that's, that's done, and now we'll take, we'll take this I would recommend doing this first before you put it together. Drill down just about halfway and you'll see the hole from the other side. And you drill down to meet that. With a spade bit, you don't ever want to just drill it uh, straight on through. I suppose you could into this, but it, it tends to blow out the back side. Now we'll just cut this other side off here. We'll get everything out of the way that we don't need anymore. Now that we have all the pieces cut and shaped, we need to make sure they're all sanded. And you can use a power sander or this. It's too hard to sand it once it's all assembled. So these are all sanded up now. So we got these, these five pieces. The one thing we need to do now is whittle, just like you see as detail on the original toolbox. So it's whittled down here, and I, I just love that aspect of it. It's just kind of this handwork. And this is a little bit uh, wider in one direction than the other, just like the original toolbox. So we're gonna get this whittled to about a half inch size. Sometimes you think you're taking too much wood away, but that's why you stop and check. So it's important to get this part done before you start putting it together. You can't put it in after the fact. There we go. And now I'm going to do the other side.
All right, there we are. There's both ends. Let's give it a try here. Oh, tap. All right, we're good. Both sides are good. Oh, that's tight. Okay, that's the way we like it. One other thing I got to do, which shows up on the original handle, is that the edges, this is being square, is a little sharp. So I'm going to take a plane, and this is a, a very small thumb uh, hand plane that actually really was my grandfather's. And something you can keep in your pocket just to trim down a board or something like that. So we're going to use an original tool reproducing his toolbox here. There's not a number on this plane and I'm not sure and I repainted it years ago all black. It used to be a couple different colors so it's probably not a collectible tool but it is rare. All we're doing is putting a chamfer on this so that it's easier on the hands. And just kind of mirroring the, the original. Now I I didn't mention at the very start, start of this toolbox episode is that I'm going to be making a set of small tools to go with it as a gift. And that'll be the next video. And I'll just quickly sand it and there it is we have a, a recreation half scale of the original toolbox now let's put it together so we'll get what we don't need off the table here bring on what we do need now one of the tricks of the trade that I learned from my dad which I've been very grateful for and he probably learned it from his dad you take a nail that you're going to use, clip the head off, and I'm going to chuck that into my drill. My cordless drill doesn't go small enough for this. I didn't know that until just now. So I'm going to use a corded drill, which goes small enough. All right, there we go. And this is going to be my drill bit. So we'll decide that this, this is the bottom. One of the tricks you can learn to do is use your finger as a guide here. So it's about 3 16ths of an inch, which is half, if you can see that. So you're halfway in to a 3 8 board. So 3 16 and I, I'll double check that. So that's where it's at, 3 16 And I'm using this as a guide. And then these are the sides and the bottom. And what this does is help you know where to put your nails when you get to that point. I'm using this piece of plywood as a backer. These are the same gauge. One is brads and this one is nails. I don't have many nails left and they're a little shorter, but they got a bigger head on them. Just trying to recreate that look of a hand nailed. trickier here on the side because like, okay now another little bit of type bond glue here is all-purpose glue 
Before I put that down, I gotta put this in place. This doesn't need to be glued in because it's not going anywhere. Make sure your ends are good. Again, this is a toolbox, not a fine piece of furniture, but it's Still need to put it together, right? Pre-drilling the holes like that keeps you from risking the splitting. One more. All right, the bottom's on. Now let's put the put the the sides on. Make sure everything lines up. Okay, glue's on. Oh, nail it down. other side Well, there's a there's a uh, a song we used to sing in grade school. That was one of my favorite songs. It was actually a round, and I don't know how many parts, maybe three times, people would sing it through. But it was simply, I won't sing it for you. But the words are saws and planes or hammers. Saws and planes and hammers are more fun than toys. Bing, bang, bing, bang, what a jolly noise. And I just thought that was a cool song. Okay, let's finish up here. All right, I'm chamfering the sides here, rounding them over just a little bit. Make it look like the other toolbox. And there it is, a mini toolbox. That's a half size replica of this one here. So I'm going to sand that off, clean off the glue, and then we're good to go. We'll give it a coat of shellac when it's all done. In the next video, I'm going to make some toy tools that'll fit in here. 
and then we'll finish this toolbox off with the toy tools all at the same time. I hope you enjoyed my little nostalgia trip and give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of video and please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. What? Look behind you on the wall. Ew, ew.